Habakkuk 2 and verse number 2. We all know this. It's a very familiar verse of Scripture. Uh, so I'm not telling you something new. Uh, and really, I'm echoing uh, everything that has already been spoken over you. Habakkuk 2. Let's go to Habakkuk 1 first, and, and then I can go to Habakkuk 2. Habakkuk chapter 1 and verse number 5. I always loved it, this particular verse of Scripture. There's a backside to this scripture. Uh, verse 5 in Habakkuk chapter 1. Look among the nation and watch and be utterly astound. For I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it was told you. For I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it was told you. Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse number Verse 2, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Before you be seated, look at your neighbor and tell him, say, what do you see? You, see? you may be seated. I've just felt something in my spirit, so let me obey God on this one. Yeah. I have, over the years of my life, um, I often tell people, I love vision, and I love being around visionaries. I really do. And I love visions, and I love being around visionaries. Um, I love being around men and women with vision. I often look at vision. I want you to remember this here. Many of you have already probably know this here, but I look at vision like this. It's a picture that I paint in my imagination of what I want my future to look like. So I want you to get that. To me, to many people, I think a vision like this. It's a picture that I paint personally in my imagination of what I want my future to look like. Uh, that's why we live and we walk by nothing but faith. Uh, and I would never get away from faith. I could never get away from faith. I could never. I could never get away from faith. Uh, because everything that has existed or is existing in my life has been because of faith. Especially faith, and we all know it, faith in the word of God. Um, a lot of time when I think about Habakkuk, I look at it because when you think about the very first chapter of Habakkuk, Habakkuk was having some issues and problems because he couldn't understand how God uh, saw certain things and it's like, God, you're not taking no notice of all of this stuff that we see going on in the world and you're just not doing nothing about it and you're about to release some, some individuals or some people or a nation that really don't serve you and uh, possessing dwelling places that are not theirs and doing things that uh, it looked like you just letting it get by and don't have no problem with it. And sometimes as a believer, if you mess around and see what the world is doing and you begin to think that, you know, that's not for me. I was listening to Bishop um, as he was really um, encouraging all of us about giving. Because uh, it's so important for us to know that all the promises of God in him is what? Yes. yes and amen. And so every time we receive the promises of God, somebody get this here too, because a promise is only a foretell of your future. I want you to get this. That's all a promise is. A promise is a foretell of your future. Okay, when God made a promise to Abraham, the Bible says that he could swear by no one else greater till he swore by himself. And I love that so much. Let's look at that in Hebrews chapter 6 real quickly. Um, probably let's, let's look at a particular verse here. And I want, I want you to get this. I don't want to just quote it because I want, I want you to get something that I believe about to lead us up to where the Lord is speaking to me at. Verse number 12. And that's why I said what I said about Bishop Bailey earlier. And I'm going to come back to it. Uh, Hebrews 6 and verse number 12. Now, I love this verse too. Listen, let's get this because it's very, very important. Uh, that you do not become sluggish, listen, but imitate those 
through faith and patience, inherit the promises. Now, I want you to stay right there in that verse number 12. And I want you to catch this here real quickly. Because, again, the Lord told me something years ago about, especially when you see blessed people or you see individuals that God has uh, materially blessed their lives. Because, like, really, truly, all of Abraham's blessings from God, they literally was material blessing. God blessed Abraham so uh, uh, bountifully. He, he really blessed Abraham. When God told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, he said, I'm going to bless those who bless you, and I'm going to curse them who curses you. And in you, all the family of the earth shall be blessed. Okay, so when I look at that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those through their faith and patience, inherit their promises. The Lord told me this years ago. I never will forget it um, because Dr. Price was one who uh, I'm always so thankful for who really introduced me personally, really uh, from a boy and then growing into an adult to have a relationship with him. Uh, I learned so much faith from him. So what the Lord showed me about this particular verse, and I want you to keep this verse of scripture too now. What the Lord showed me about this Hebrews 6 and 12, do not become sluggish, but imitate those through their faith and patience inherit their promises. The Lord said this here, never imitate a man's possessions. Imitate his faith. Please keep this. Never imitate a man's possessions, but imitate his faith. I believe that any time God want to bless you, he'll drop you in a month, another man's world. Let me say that again. Any time God wants to bless you, Bishop Jake said it on Friday night. We really literally sitting in a building and when we drive up on this campus, God allowed us to just tap into a little of what Bishop Bailey must be thinking. You got to get this here. See, when I talk about exposure, this is what I tell people. Anything God is trying to expose you to, he's trying to take you there. Exposure, exposure is so important that I just don't look at the carpet. I just don't look at all, you know, the technology. When, when, when I go to a nice fine restaurant, I don't even just look at the silverware. I don't just look at uh, of the, the china. I don't, I don't look at all those things and, and don't want to take something back with me. When I step into another man's world, I'm trying to see what can I do to find out how he did what he did. I was, in the, I was in, the, in, in, in the bathroom a moment ago before I came out and I looked on the wall and I said, I see why you keep having to wipe your walls down. Cause you ain't got the right type of paneling up on these walls. When I walked into the bathroom, I said, oh, you can just wipe this down because you ain't got to have all them fingerprints marked all over the wall. I thought about it, I said, when I get back to Brunson, I'm gonna have to find me somebody who do this kind of work. <laughs> Because it's causing me some money to keep repainting stuff. I've been dropped into another man's world and my exposure will not limit me to my possibilities. Wait a minute, y'all missed. I want somebody to get what I just said. I don't know if you caught that there, but every time I get exposed, Sheriff, to something, then I know it's, it's possible. This could happen. Okay, this could happen, so now I got to tap into how did this happen? How did this take place in this man's life? And so what I have to do, I have to begin to, uh, uh, begin to as I can only go say, walk by faith and not by sight. Look at your neighbor and say, never walk by what you see, but by what you believe. Yeah, see the Bible say your eyes haven't seen, your ears haven't heard, it haven't entered into your heart what God got prepared for you. Come on, somebody. Matter of fact, every time I look at Habakkuk chapter 1 and 5, stay right there in Hebrew 12, 6, so I'm coming back. Every time I look at Habakkuk 1 and 5, again, where it says, look among the nation, watch and be utterly astound. Tyler, he said, for I will do a work in your days, even if I told you you wouldn't believe it. 
Now you got to get this now. You got to really get this here. It, 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 on the flip side, God was telling uh, uh, Habakkuk, he said, now I'm going to raise up the child in them. They are bitter. They are a hasty nation of people. They are possessing dwelling places are not theirs. And Habakkuk saying to God, how can you really do that there? You, you know, you're really supposed to be for us. And God tells Habakkuk, because you keep sitting on your hind parts, not doing anything. So I got to let the world do some stuff that you will not do. Come on, somebody. Sometimes the world can believe God more than we can believe God. Because truthfully, faith and belief is different. When I say I have faith, that means I'm acting and I'm moving on what I believe. Some people can believe something but never move. They can just speak it, they can just say it, but they never do nothing about it. When you begin to walk by faith and not by sight, whether you got the money or not, you know that God is still a provider. I wish I had 30 people. I would, come on, somebody. I wish if, if we can ever get in our mind, it doesn't matter how things look or appear at this moment. God is at work in my life, and I don't even know it. Look at your neighbor and say, he just laid you on somebody's heart. But you got to believe that. You got to believe what the word says. Luke 6 and 6 says, if you give, watch what he said. It's going to be what? Give them back to you. Okay. I often remember, when, when, when the Lord spoke to me last week, he said, or, or one day this week, he said, I want you to take another seed to right direction. And he said, because there's certain things I've been doing these seven months of this year, and I have been having to sow seed. Because we just finished a building project as well. A 40,000 square foot, a banquet hall, and a gymnasium, and, 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 and certain things for our young And guess what? I got a lot of that following that man right now. Yeah, I, I, I never thought about building a gym until I was down here one night preaching at Right Direction. He took me over in another building. And I saw that gym. I said, oh, my God. Sanctified people can have a gym. <laughs> and a workout facility. Y'all ain't got to say amen. Come on, y'all. Ooh, I wish I had somebody to grab hold of something. Something's about to break in your life. Tell your neighbor real quickly, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? I'm going to get to this point. What do you see? Really, what do you see? Do you really see yourself, as the man of God said earlier, do you really see yourself debt free? Even with debt now, can you still call things which be not as though they were? I wish I had somebody to grab hold of it. See, some people tell me that right now. He's talking about 17 million. That's his faith. That's where God has him at. So, so I'm believing God to just pay off $5 million. Now, you know what? I got to do everything to see that he get this building paid off. Y'all ain't got to talk to me up here. See, this is the mindset we have. We have to have a mindset like this. Luke 16 and 12 say, if you are not faithful in that which is another, who will give you that which is your own? Bring me, there we go, thank you. And I had to learn that again, Chandler, Pastor Chandler, come in real quickly. I had to learn, really seriously, I had to learn that particular verse of scripture that he said, if you're not faithful in that which belongs to another, who will give you your own? So if I'm not pushing Pastor Chandler's vision, making sure that this vision go off like God wanted to go off. Come on, somebody. I got to push his vision, and if I push his vision, when it's my time, somebody gonna push my vision. Come on, y'all, come on, come on, come on, come on. Thank you, Sheriff. Come on, y'all, there's no need to, come on. Thank you, Tyler. If I done, if I done push another man's vision and make sure this happens for him, no matter what nobody say about him or her, come on somebody, anybody got $17 million to build a facility like this, do you think they got time taking money, playing games? They ain't got nobody to trust but God in this season. I wish I had 30 people, come on. You can listen to the naysayers all you want to. The Lord has already blessed his life. He, when we got out of debt, 
three years ago maybe now for my first building. I was good. I say, Lord, Sheriff, I said, I ain't got to worry about nothing. We done paid the millions and millions back to the bank. And soon as we did it, the Lord told me, he said, I need you to build a faith complex. And I say, huh? He said, I need you to build a faith complex. Matter of fact, he told me like this, and somebody need to write this down too. He said, because you're playing it too safe. He said, everything I've ever done in your life came with a risk. Somebody get that R-I-S-K. Thank you for receiving it. I was, I was getting ready for service one morning, and the Lord spoke to me, and he said, you're playing it too safe. He said, because everything I've ever done in your life came with a risk. Even when you didn't know where the resources and the finances was going to come from. Came with a risk. So when the Lord told me, said it was time for me to build another building. And I was like, okay, God, you said it, so you're going to provide. Like he said, people ask me, say, what is the light bill in that building? I tell them, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I tell my finance department, my CPA, as long as everything taken care of, I can preach the gospel. I, I don't want to know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to know what the saints' tithes are. Because when I get ready to teach on giving, I don't want nobody to think, oh, he talking about me. <laughs> See, I got to be free to teach this him. I serve Jehovah Jireh. <laughs> Thank you, Chef. I serve Jehovah Jireh. I serve the God that provides. I told him one day, I said, if nobody tired, I'm going to tie. If nobody give, I'm going to give. Come on, somebody. Can't nobody, the Lord just told me to tell 20 of you all right now, where he's about to take you at in this season, can't nobody stop it because God got his, God got his hand on your life. Come on, somebody. Whatever your dream is, whatever your vision is, God said, I got my hand on your life. Nehemiah said it like this here. If you go back and read Nehemiah chapter 2, Nehemiah said, the good hand of God. I believe that's verse number 2, 8. Nehemiah 2 and 8. See if you can put it up there real quick. And a letter to Asaph, the keeper of the king's forest. Go back up. Go, 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 go. go. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. That he must give me timber to make beans for the gate of the citadel, which pertain to the temple for the city wall and for the house that will, I will occupy. And the king, listen, the king granted it. And the king granted them. Go ahead, finish that out. According to the good hand of God that's upon my life. I need 20 people right now, know right now, the good hand of God is on my life. Oh, y'all ain't saying it like you mean it. If you know it, you don't care what nobody think about it. Can't nobody stop the plan of God in your life because the good hand of God. Good to see y'all. The good hand of God is upon my life. That's why I tell people right now, you do not have haters. Stop talking about who hates you, who trying to stop you. You do not have haters. People don't hate you. They hate the level of your performance. They cannot see how you keep bouncing back. Even if they think you done lost, they just don't know. It's a season that God gonna turn all of this around. God Almighty. Whatever God has not yet released in your life, he's still working on you. Whatever God has not, he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He got to see your motive. Why you do what you do. Who are you trying to impress? Romans chapter 8 says, right about verse 26 and 27, it says, he who knows the heart knows what the mind of the spirit thinks. That means every time I do something, he know my motive. 
you know why I do it. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing it? I'm almost too close to this message this morning. Look at your neighbor and tell them, say, what do you see? What do you see? What do you see? When God told me that years ago, he said, stop talking about you got haters. I don't even like using that word. Haters? Everybody like me. They just don't know it. Lord, I wish I had 30 people grab hold of this. Everybody like me. They just don't know it. Got no haters. You just hate the level of your performance. They don't see how you do what you do. How are you going to tell God to move your enemies when he done told you he want to prepare a table for you? Let me go over here. Let me go over here. He said, I will prepare a table for you right in the presence of your enemies, which means I will, your enemies will be looking over my shoulder while I'm writing your future out before they eyes. I need somebody to grab hold of something. Thank you. They will be looking over my shoulder while I prepare what I said. Wait a minute. God said your enemies can't die until they see the glory of God get revealed in your life. He gonna leave some of them around here long enough so they can see. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. When you know you are the seed of Abraham, let me help you. When you know you are the seed of Abraham, you will understand why he said, I bless those who bless you. Genesis 12, and I curse him who curses you. God said, you ain't got to worry about that. I need you to keep focus on what you see. What do you see? What make you get up every morning to know that if God be for me, who don't even matter? Y'all missed it. I wish I had 30 people grab. I know y'all quoted who can be against me, but in this season, who don't even matter? Because if I got the Jehovah Jireh and the, you better run, girl. God said run if you got to run. Who don't even matter? don't even matter. If God be for you, who? Who don't even matter? I ain't got time trying to think about who. Hallelujah. Acts 10 and 34, I want you to remember something here. I'm almost there. Lord, he's taking me here. Acts 10 and 34. Put it up there real quickly for me. Acts 10 and 34. Give it to me real quickly. Hallelujah. There we go. Then Peter opened his mouth. I want somebody to grab hold of this and this is the truth too. Then Peter opened his mouth and said in truth, I perceive that God, oh God, you know, this verse of scripture, it delivered me years ago. He said, I perceive that God shows no partiality. God has no respecter of person. God respects principles. He said, I perceive that God shows no partiality. You and I cannot be ever thinking that that someone is holding us down. If anybody is holding you down, it's you. Y'all ain't got to say amen. Let me tell you something. Years ago when I grabbed hold to Mark chapter 11, and I learned a lot of this from Dr. Marcy as well as from Bishop Bailey. Seriously, when I grabbed hold to Mark chapter 11 and verse number 22, when Jesus said, have faith in God. When I grabbed hold of that years ago, have the God kind of faith or have the faith of God. When I grabbed hold of that years ago, I did. I had to grab hold of this here. Because when I learned from Romans chapter four and 17, It says again, and he called things which be not as though they were. So I had to tie this verse 22 in with Romans 4 and 17. 
And I have to get this. Look what he said. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom believe God who gives life to the dead. And he calls those things which do not exist as though they were or as though they did. See, when I learned that over the years, really? And he called those things which do not exist as though it did? You mean to tell me I can still walk in something and I don't even have it? Y'all ain't got to say amen. You mean to tell me I can walk in something and I don't even have it? When I was driving my pup pup, it didn't matter what nobody thought. I knew I wasn't going to be in that pup pup always. When I started in my storefront building, I started in the storefront, but the storefront wasn't in me. Y'all ain't got that. I don't care if you in the project, long as the project ain't in you. You can be in a come on somebody. It doesn't matter. Before the Lord blessed me with suits and all the things that people are so impressed with today, I had to shop to the Salvation Army. Oh, wish I could come and go. When he was up here giving testimony, say, let me tell you something. The scripture is right. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. Grab your neighbor and pull them. Say, only if you knew what I came out of. You'll be praising God with me. You wouldn't be looking at me like I'm trying to impress you. You wouldn't be looking at me like I'm trying to come on somebody. Those things say, look where he brought me from. Glory to God. Y'all think he just saw this? Y'all think he just saw all of the campuses? Y'all think he just saw it? This just popped up? He been saw it. He saw it when he was supporting and pushing others. He saw it when he had to look up to the ceiling at night and say, God, really? This is what you calling this little boy to do from Jersey? That's why his uncle had to say, look where we come from, boy. Look what's happening in your life. If your grandmama, your mama, your nieces, your nephews can only understand, I raise you up to be the Joseph of the family. Go grab your neighbor next to you, tell him, say, I was raised up to be the Joseph of the family. Yes, sir. You better open up your mouth like you know it. I was raised up to trust God. I was raised up to get the curse off the family. I was raised up to trust God with my tithes and offering. I was raised up to trust God with my seed. God Almighty, he raised you up to be the first in your family. Cause everybody didn't see what you saw. My dad used, he used to be concerned about me so much. He said, he said, he said, he said, you ain't gonna never have nothing cause you keep giving away everything. Hallelujah. He said, everything you get, you keep giving it away. Why you won't hold something for yourself? You keep giving away everything. I said, daddy, this all I know. Because when you get addicted to giving, y'all ain't got to say amen. See, come on somebody. When, when you get addicted to giving, I'm talking about not just even financially, love. Somebody told me I was preaching not long ago and I was preaching this message in the book of Roma. The love of God has been poured in my heart by the Holy Spirit. So it matters not how you treat me or what you say about me because I'm never judged by how you feel about me. And I, the Lord had told me something. I was at the Dream Center a couple weeks ago with Bishop William Murphy and the Lord spoke this to me. He said, tell the saint, you never judge by how people treat you. You only judge by how you treat them. The Lord had to speak something to me. He said, people are entitled to their opinions about you. You lead them to their opinions. Oh, because everybody got an opinion. So everyone is entitled to their opinions about you. The day you focus on how somebody feel about you, it's going to slow down your acceleration. Oh, y'all ain't got to say amen. 
Come on, somebody. I need 20 people to grab hope. You better holler, whoever that was. The Lord told me to tell you, you are already going forward. You ain't got time figuring out who like you and who don't like you. You need to be giving God praise for where God done brought you from. Matter of fact, I just heard God say, tell them, I'm getting ready to give them an opportunity. He said, before I give it to them, he said, tell them to praise me like they already did. He said, tell them to praise me like they already did. Y'all ain't got it yet. The Lord said, I'm getting ready to give them an opportunity. He said, if they just praise me right now, I can do it before the day is over with. Yeah! Let me be seated for a minute. I'm almost done. Wait a minute. The Lord just told me to tell you, pray me for another opportunity. Y'all ain't caught that. Maybe before the day is over with, it'll get in your spirit. But God just, thank you, Sham. Thank you. Hey, Shay, glory. Glory to God. Glory. I got the clothes on. Be seated. I'm, I'm serious now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get this to you. He said, listen, I, I just heard that one. He said, tell them. I know I done done a lot of things in their life. He said, but tell them they ain't seen what I'm about to do. You, you ain't got to say it. He said, because your eyes haven't seen. Your ears haven't heard. It haven't entered into your heart what I got prepared for you. He said, but tell them I'm getting ready to give them another opportunity. Praise him if that was for you. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was, but God told me to tell you, praise him for the next opportunity. And he said, the next time I open up this door, you don't know if it had not been for the Lord on my side. I wouldn't even have this opportunity. Be seated. You remember when I told, you remember when I told Kwame before Michael Jordan had re recruited him to play for the Washington Wizards? He was in high school. He came in my office one day. He said, Pastor, he said, they say I might get drafted. And I said, you are. So a couple weeks later came on. He said, Pastor, they say I might go number one round draft pick. I said, you are. But this ain't never happened for a high school player. I say, you the first. Amen. Wait a minute. His mama sold a seed into my ministry. Her social security check, which was only, it was $1,200. That's all she had to her name. We were believing God for 21 acres of land to build our first building. So she told me, I was asking everybody that can and will to sow a $1,000 seed. We was in the storefront church. So I said, everyone saw a thousand dollars seat. So she came to me, well, she stopped me and my wife, and she said, we was coming, we was pulling up to the post office, his mom was coming down the steps. She said, there you go. And she was real tall. And I said, Laura, I said, oh my God. I said, oh my God. Miss Joyce was to come and jack me up or something. She said, there you go, I've been looking for you. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, didn't you say that you were believing for us to sow a seed for the land? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, um, I'm going to tell it like it is. She said, turn your head. <laughs> y'all know what, y'all, you know, yeah, you know, <laughs> yeah, you just did it. I didn't do that. You did that. No, I didn't do that. You did that. She said, she, said, <laughs> she said, turn your head. So I turned my head. I don't know where it come from, but it came. <laughs> I 
<laughs> the sisters know what I'm talking about. So I, so I said, uh, I said, yes, ma'am. She says, uh, she said, well, here go, this is my social security check, twelve hundred dollars. I said, Miss Joyce, I cannot take your twelve hundred dollars. I said, won't you just do like fifty dollars a month, you know, sow the seed? And I said, cause you know, just go on and just do it like that. And she looked at me. She said, I want you to take the whole twelve hundred dollars. I said, Miss Joyce, I said, let's do a hundred dollars. You got seven boys, and all of them by six eleven. You got seven boys, and all of them about six eleven, seven foot, and you got other brothers, and all of them be. <laughs> and I am, I don't, I can't stand all of them being beaten on me like that. You know, seriously. So she told me after I, she asked me, she told me again. She said, I, she said. She said, I need you to take it. She said, you do it. She said, you said we're going to believe in this land. You got to get it. And I said, I heard the Holy Ghost say you got to receive it. But first she said, if you don't believe what you're preaching, why are you preaching it? That's what, those are words. She said, you showed us in Genesis chapter 26 where Isaac sold in a famine. Verse 12, Genesis 26. She said, you showed us in Genesis 26 and verse number 12 where Isaac, there we go, then Isaac sowed in that land and he reaped, listen, listen what it says, and he reaped, hey, shake, hey. I just sowed a seed. And I'm believing for this year it's out. I'm going to reap my harvest, Bishop. The Savior! Same year. He sowed, he reaped in the same year, and the Lord blessed him. Now, wait a minute. You have to keep going and reading all of that now. We don't have time to go through it all, but you know. The Bible said the man began to prophesy. Go to verse 13. There we go. Listen to what he says. The man began to prosper. He continued prospering until he became very prosperous. See, some of y'all stop at one stage. As soon as you start prospering, you stop. God say, I want you to continue prospering. Both in your body, your soul, and your mind, and your spirit. You know, I need somebody to just throw your hand up. I don't care if you had an ache in your arm. God said, throw your hand up like your whole body is healed. Kick your leg like your whole, everything is. Come on, somebody. I just, I just feel somebody. The Lord told me to say, tell somebody to grab hold of something. Your whole body is healed. You got use in activities of your limb. Come on, somebody. You, you are clothed in your right mind. Every part of your body is healed. I decree that over you. Somebody believe in God for a child for this year is out. Before next year getting here. God told me to tell you to pray them like you going to the doctor and he going to tell you you got twins in your belly. Oh, but... Well, maybe that wasn't for you. Somebody better, hey, 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 God told me, just, and the only thing I'm going to do, I'm going to obey God. Somebody believing for a child. And I'm telling you, by this time next year. Watch now, watch. 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 By this time next year, whoever that word is for, you gonna bring forth a child. I speak to every part of your body organs in the name of Jesus. If you believe it for a son or a daughter right now, God told me to tell you right now, put some pressure on that word and call some things to be not as though they were. I done seen it happen. 
I done seen it happen. I had a man and his wife one Sunday, that woman said her husband walked out the door and he was waiting on her and she came up to the altar and she said, I asked her, you know, what was her request was, was a prayer. And she said, yes, she said, me and my husband, you know, we believing for a child and it's like we, we're not able to have a child. And I told him, I told him, guys, I said, her husband just walked out the door. I said, one of y'all asked him would he come back in the church. So he did come back in the church and, and I said in his ear what his wife told me. He said, yes, sir. I said, well, okay then. And we began to pray. It wasn't about a, about a month or two, Regina was, Ms. Sadie said that she was pregnant. So when they came to me and they said, Pastor, I said, yeah, they said, she pregnant. All this time, couldn't get no point, no, this is what I said. I said, you don't understand something. When some of us pray, we believe what we pray for. Come on, tell your neighbor, say, I believe what I pray for. And matter of fact, if I don't put a seed on it, devil, you better look out. Because seed produces after its own kind. When I don't put a seed on it, and I don't name that seed, I'm closing on something. The man began to prosper, he continued to prosper, until he became very prosperous. He prospered so, listen, saying, he prospered so to the Bible said that the Philistines envied him. Show him that verse. There we go. For he had possessions and flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines, know what the Bible say? They envied him. Some of you all about to go to a place in your life you ain't never been. That's why you're up on a ministry like this. Let me tell you, I'm serious. I'm not just saying this to say it, because that's my friend, that's my brother. I love that man. I love his wife. I love his family. It's like we are, I know God connected us. I'm telling you I believe it. I believe it. I believe the words come out of his mouth. I'm not saying that just to say that. I believe if he speak it, I believe if she speak it, I believe that the power of death and life is in their tongue. I know if they speak life over me, it's going to happen. And the Bible said to you and I, death and life is in the power of our tongue, and those who love it will eat the fruit thereof. That means whatever you say, you're going to have it. So whoever that is for this child, God told me to tell you that thing is already done. You ain't got to say nothing. I just heard God say, he said, tell 20 of them again, I'm just about to give you another opportunity. <laughs> Chef, I can't get off of that. I just heard God say, tell 20 people, I'm about to give you another opportunity. Look at your neighbor and say, you better be ready for this one here. You better do everything in your power to get yourself ready for this one here, because God is getting ready to give you another opportunity. He's getting ready to do it. He's getting ready to give you another opportunity. And the Holy Ghost said, give you this here, 1 Corinthians 16 and 9, so you can have scripture. The one thing I love about writing direction now, y'all know y'all Bible. That's what I don't want to tell you. Y'all know y'all Bible. You know, your man of God ain't nothing but a word, man. So you know your Bible. Give me, give me, give me, give me. There we go. Here we go. The Lord told me to tell him this in Dr. Marcy. He said, tell him. This is this opportunity, because he just dropped this in my spirit, so I'm obeying. He said, tell him for a great and effective door. Uh-oh, if you, if you understand that verse of scripture, just reading it, you better give God a praise because God just told me to tell you a great and effective door has just opened for you. God they prayed that you didn't open the door. He said, I just opened up. Somebody better praise them for this opportunity. Chef, get ready. Whatever you see, you keep on seeing it. Whatever 
some of you all, I, this is my all, and trust me, I, I have too much integrity to play with God now, so I have an all on me for something that's about to break for some of you all. I, I really didn't even get all the way Tyler to this message, what do you see? But the Lord now, whoever this word, you need to grab hold of this word all week. This particular verse here. The Lord told me to tell you, you've been trying to open too many doors for yourself. He said, a great and effective door has opened for you. Now, when you keep reading it, I don't too much read the latter part of it because I know it's, it's part of it, but he said, there are many adversaries. I mean, they're going to be people like how they did Isaac in Genesis 26. See, when Isaac began to prosper, go back and read it. You can see it. You know it. I don't have to tell you. And it says he, it says the Philistines envied him. Then they tried to cut off all of his resources. Anytime God getting ready to do something in your life, you got to understand, there will be people try to turn people against you. That's a part of the process. But you can't focus on that. You didn't open the door. God opened it. I want you to grab this. I really do. Thank you for receiving it. I want you to grab this. See, when Isaac began to prosper, and the Bible says he continued to prosper, he continued to become very prosperous until the Philistines envied him. The Bible said then he began to dig wells. He did one well called Ezek, as you read in that same 26th chapter here. He dig another well, which was called Sitna. He dig another well, which was called Rehoboth. Now, Ezek, they argued over it. Sitna, he had so much opposition, people trying to fight him, stop it. But then when he got to that third well, Rehoboth, he said, now the Lord has made room enough for me. Because why? I didn't worry about who was arguing. I just kept digging. Amen. 
Because again, people are entitled to their opinions about you. I'm here to tell somebody today the very thing that you see, God is about to bring it to pass. I'm not just saying that to say it. The Lord telling me to tell the very thing you see, God is about to bring it to pass. Whether it's healing in your body, whether your son or your daughter getting off of drugs or coming back to their rightful place, whether it's you pastors that are here and those might be watching, God is about to bring it to pass. I have uh, a lot of officials that attend my church and a lot of things that I talk to people about, especially people in government, especially people that are entrepreneurs. Some of you entrepreneurs, where you at in here? Throw your hand up. Some of you business entrepreneurs. <laughs> Is that lady going out who hollered? She didn't have to leave. That's an anointing in that voice. There's somebody, where you entrepreneurs at? Lift your hand. I'm serious about this. The Lord told me I tell entrepreneurs this all over the country. Never look for people you know to support your vision. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to be mad. Because you would have thought at least they would have done it. Because they know you. The Lord said, never look for people you know to support your vision. You're going to be frustrated. You need God to drop people or drop you in people's spirit. That they don't even know why they stopped by your business. That they don't even know why they want to do business with you. Motives got to be right. Let me, let me say what I just heard God told me to tell you again. See, when Bishop was preaching, he's doing a lot for me to stay away from a lot of what he said on, Sunday, on Friday night. But when Bishop was preaching past six, seven weeks, I've been talking about structure. Structure brings on excellence. And excellence brings on opportunities. And you know when you are in your purpose or place of assignment when God gives you an opportunity.